final product, which is built using Laravel. It's a web monitoring system. Uh, right now, it shows three websites, which are coming from my database, Google, Yahoo, and my website. Uh, and the state of two websites, Google and Yahoo, is up, and my website is down, just because I have turned it off. I'll go ahead and turn on, turn on my website. Now it says it has started running, and I will run this scheduler again, which we just made using Laravel. And as you know, that our scheduler, scheduler runs every one minute. As soon as this starts uh, our running our command and going through it, we should be able to see that on our front end, this should go from down to up, because now our website is up and running. I'll pause the video and come back when the scheduler has already run. So our scheduler has already uh, now run once, and uh, you, as you can see, it says that it has run this uptime minute command, and the status is done. And, and it has created some logs for us. So it ran for these three websites, which we had already in our database. Now we should be able to see a different result when we refresh this page now. And all right, you can see our website is now up. And I hope you like the project and have, have fun building it. In this tutorial, we're going to see how we can build a website monitoring system. And the uh, um, framework we're going to use is Laravel for this project. The reason for choosing this project is uh, uh, it will teach us a few important concepts. Uh, one is how to create these migrations um, and run them in Laravel. The other one is uh, what, what is the role of cron jobs? Why do we use cron jobs? And uh, also how we can create custom commands to perform some actions. Um, and yeah, let's get started with it. The uh, version of Laravel uh, at the moment I'm recording this video is Laravel 10. But uh, uh, if you're if you're watching this in future um, and some other version is out, it will still probably work because Laravel doesn't change uh, a lot uh, for the simpler things in, in a simpler context. So uh, yeah, let's get started right away. I uh, will use Composer um, to install the project. So I will just go ahead and copy this command run into my terminal. I have a folder called Laravel Projects for, for this. I will paste this command and I will name my folder monitor. And I will then just run and wait for it to install all the dependencies and do some post and uh, pre and post production, uh, pre, pre install and post install um, settings for the Laravel. The installation is done. And um, as you can see, uh, it says application key set, set successfully. Um, and, and now what we can do is we can jump into the folder we, ju we just created, which is called monitor. And um, I'm using PHP version 8.1 uh, in case that's important for someone. And I will just go ahead and start serving this application. PHP artisan service is the command for that. And it says service, server started running on this. And I will just copy. And yeah, so um, this is the new interface for Laravel 10. And uh, yeah, the, uh, we have successfully installed. If you see this page, uh, then it means that this is successfully installed. One more thing I forgot to do is I will just go ahead and open this um, in Visual Studio Code, the code editor, which I will use for this project. You can use whatever um, suits you. And I will again serve the website. Okay, let's jump into the project in the Visual Studio Code. And the first thing we can do is we can go to the routes, web.php. And instead of this welcome page, which is being served here, you can find it under resources, views, welcome.play.php. I already have a pre-made pre template, which uh, I will use for my for my projects, uh, for this project. So I will just copy and paste it here and I will go through it with you. Just um, first we can see it on the front end. So pretty simple. Um, we have a title, we have a refresh button, which, which will just refresh the website uh, URL. We have one list element with the website name and I will tell you what up and down is in a moment. These are just essentially some hard-coded HTML of um, this whole and we will try to make it dynamic. And if you go through the code, um, you can see I include some Google fonts at the start and then I install, um, and then I um, download this Bulma. Uh, Bulma, if you don't know, is a CSS framework uh, for which has some pre-made components so you don't have to um, design the components yourself. For example, this is a pre-made component. You see this with the, with the white card and this button is pre-made so I don't have to style it. I just use their classes and, and it works uh, out of the box. And here in the styling section, I just um, May I make the font family, uh, which I uh, installed from Google, and I set the minimum height. Um, this is the title which you're seeing, and this is the refresh button, and this is the list item, which we will uh, make dynamic afterwards. Uh, let me just reformat it a bit, so it looks a bit nicer. All right. Okay, um, so as we've done this, the first thing we can do after this is we can go into the database. Um, we, we need a database to store our values. Uh, I will be using SQLite. So you can just go ahead and create this database.sqlite file. And after creating this, in order to connect it, we need uh, to set this DB connection to SQLite. Um, and we can go ahead and comment this out because uh, these are the environment variables which will not be needed by us uh, for SQLite. That being done, uh, what we can do now is we can go ahead and create our migration, which uh, we will use to um, create a database table. So I'll go to the terminal. I will just uh, open another terminal in the same folder, and I will go ahead and run this command to create my migration file, PHP artisan make migration, and I will call this create websites table. Um, this, um, this is just a helper provided from Laravel to quickly create these files, but you can go ahead and do this manually as well, but I do not recommend it because it's already very easy uh, way to create a file. Okay, it tells me that it has created a database migrations and then this file. I will go ahead and we just do the code and see database migrations and this file, which is already created uh, by Laravel for me. Uh, the other ones, uh, which you see here on the left panel, uh, are provided by default by Laravel, so I did not create them. Okay, uh, to create uh, columns, uh, we need a few columns. For example, the name column, what will be the name of the website? The other one is URL, what will be the URL of the website? And then we need um, a way to and then we need a way to um, see if the website is up or down using active. I will use the active flag. It will be either false, either true. Okay. 
that being done, um, we can go ahead and run our migrations and see if we uh, if that runs successfully for us. Um, so php artisan migrate is the command for that. And if you see done, it means that our migration has successfully run, which is nice. And in order uh, in order to see something in the front, we need a few um, uh, a few things uh, we can do. Uh, first of all, um, we can create a model for this table, which we just uh, created website. So I will call this, call this model um, website. So the command is part php artisan make model and website. As I said, you can go ahead and manually create this file, but I like to use the commands. So I will just uh, show you. It has created a file app in the models, and the, uh, this is the file it has created called website. That being done, now we can go ahead and create some records in the database. For that, we will use php artisan tinker. And if we say website equals to new and path to our models class, which is website. And now we can go ahead and use these those three columns, which we just created in the database, and we can call the first one Google. Why not? Then we can say the URL would be google.com, and we will say that the active will be true. And then we can save it. Right, uh, yeah. Let me quickly go ahead and create another one. And for that, I will use the name Yahoo. Yahoo.com, and I will say it's not active. And run the website, save command. Okay. Okay, this should have created a few records in our database, uh, which we can now try to see. So if now we go to our web.php, which is renders in the routes folder here. And instead of this welcome, if we say dollar websites equals to website all. And um, remember to import this uh, in your, if ever you're using this website small. For me, um, it was auto imported by Visual Studio Code. And uh, if we just dump it and go to the front end. Yes, so you see that we have items uh, with two areas. And if you expand this, we see these attributes. And these three are the most important ones which we just created. So Google, HTTPS, Google.com, and the active flag to one. One means true. Now we can see that our data is coming back from it. Um, either we can pass it right here, which I do not recommend doing, and I will um, go ahead and make a controller. So PHP artisan make controller, website controller, and it's, uh, it has created file on this path. I will show you now. App, HTTP controllers, website controller, and here we can say pub public function show all. And uh, here, what we can do is the same. We can just probably copy it here. Um, yeah, and as I said, we need to import this class up here. So now what we can do is return return a view, which is called welcome, because it's, as you can see here, we have welcome.plate.php. So we return a view called welcome, and we pass in websites to it. And this websites and this websites uh, should be same. This is the same name we use here. As now we have a function, we do not need to do it right here. And we can remove this. We can say website controller class. And then what was the name of the function? It was show all. So we just copy it and paste it here. So what it does is now, if when someone visits this, uh, visits this route, it tells the controller someone has visited this route, and it sh you should show all. So call this function and do the same. If we are still able to see our website, so we do not have any errors right now. And yeah, we can see our website still. Now we need to see if when we are passing this website, so we need to receive it in our welcome.plate.php here. And here, after this, we can do a for each loop for it. And our variable which we pass is called websites, and we will take it as a website. And we can put all the code inside this for each loop. And instead of this hard coded website name, we can now use our database column which we created and call it name. And then um, we can also have an if condition here, which says if dollar if the website is active, then show up else show that the website is down and then we close this if if now now we go to the website refresh this and you can see it's coming it's picking up the values coming from the database the google is up as we said it and the yahoo is down as we said it All right now we can go ahead and inside the tinker we can create another website just to reiterate what we did so i will call it my website i will give it a url of let's say one 27, let's go to one, and I will use the port 8001, and I will uh, tell you why I'm using 8001 in some time. And we say it's not active. Or we say it's active for now, let's say. 
you save it and now we should be able to show it in the front end as well so if you refresh and yes you can see our website showing up which is good now we have to create the pair create the logic where we dynamically update the values of these websites in the backend for this i will create a php artisan command uh, make command and i will call this monitor as it says we have created an app console commands monitor.php let's go there let me close all all this and app console commands monitor as you can see we have uh, a command structure in place we can call it anything but i will i will call it uptime and monitor and in the command description i can say this is a website monitoring command right and if with just this we go ahead and say php artisan and grab uptime so you see it spits out our command which is uptime monitor this is a website monitoring command okay that's good now in the handle method what we can do is we can go ahead call our um, get all our websites from the database and then run another for each for each websites as website we can say for we can see uh, we can check if this if this website is uh, functioning or not for that we need to use this um, http class this is the full path the namespace make sure to import that and we can see uh, we can say make a get request to this website url and return the response to us and if the response is okay then what you do what you can do is you can set the active to true else what you can do is you can set the active to false and then you can go ahead and save so basically what it's doing is it's going to get all the websites we have in the database it's going to run over them one by one it's going to create a get request to them and if the request is successful it will say the website is active and save it in the website if the request is unsuccessful it will go here it will set it to false and it will save so uh, right now if we go ahead and run this command php artisan uh, uptime monitor it's going to take some time okay it says um it's not able to connect to 8000 okay i'm sorry for that uh, because if it doesn't able is, is not able to see a website it um, throws an error so we have to use a try and catch here so yep um we can move this logic here if the response is okay then we say website active equals to true else we say website active equals to false and if it throws the error this also means that we can just directly set the website equals to uh, active equals to false and in the end we save it to the database and now we, uh, we can go ahead and run this command again and see if we see any errors now hopefully not okay we don't see any errors and it stopped uh, running which is good and now we can go ahead and refresh our page you can see google is up yahoo is up my website is down okay that's uh, that's the expected results and uh, now i will uh, tell you why i created that 8001 uh, because i already have another Laravel project on the side and i can go ahead and serve it so it started running on port 8001 and what we can do is we can run this command again and now hopefully when we go ahead uh, and refresh this page now this down should be changed to an up i see i think i know what the problem is um i think i have added in the database um, as an https sorry about that and let me go ahead and fix that so it's app models website and the method is find and how i know it's three because i just added three records so i know it's going to be three um so i as you can see we have https here which is not supported so i can just go ahead and change this to http 27.0.0.1 and 8001 and i'll just save it again and now uh, coming out of it i will just run this command once more yes it's up so sorry about that um, that was my mistake uh, but it's good we can see some mistakes um, live and see what's going wrong there that's been done Our, we have, now we have a command which, which we which can modify um, the records but the problem is we have to go ahead and do it manually every time we uh, we go ahead run this command and it updates the record at the front end but we need to find a way to automatically do this um, that one is a great way of helping us in this so inside the app folder in the co console we have a kernel inside this kernel we can say schedule this command and our command is called uptime monitor and run this command we can say it early we can say uh, run this command every one minute every two minutes however you like it i will say run it every minute but you can configure it to run it as many times as you want in a minute as well um this will now run 
our command every minute, um, but we need to do some settings before that. If you go come down here and if you say if I will, I will just log it. So if log information the monitoring command ran for and then we can say our website name um, this will create a log file and I will just create make this empty so when we run this we can see some logs here and what we can do now is php artisan I think it's called schedule work I'm not sure but we will get an error in case there's a problem so now the schedule is running it will run schedule task every minute and uh, in a moment we will be we will be able to see some logs in our log file and uh, some something printed out here as well so I'll pause the video and come back so as you can see now we have something printed out on here and now if we go ahead and see our log file yeah so it has already three commands which says it command ran for Google Yahoo and my website I will go ahead and refresh you can see my website is up I will go now and stop running this website and when this schedule runs the second time now we should see a change in our website uh, front end and I will again pause the, uh, pause the video so as you can see the command ran for the second time and if we go ahead and see in our log files now we have six logs and uh, as I turn the website off we should see a different result now when I refresh this page so it's done and yeah this could be a starting point for many other um, things which, which you can do for this monitoring system or any other way you can utilize it this is just uh, an idea and I hope that you liked uh, what you saw thank you